Okay, welcome to another tutorial. This one is on significant digits. Uh, as you can see that I've color coordinated the translation, important numbers. Now each and every number consists of a bunch of digits and some of them are important and some of them are not. Uh, and there's a specific rule that you have to follow when doing any sort of mathematical calculation. Uh, so what is the significant digit and what is that rule? And that's the, the gist of our uh, tutorial today. So this rule, all significant digits, or all digits I should say, in a number are considered significant except for what we call leading zeros. So the first thing you need to do, be able to do is count how many significant digits are in a given number. So here is an example right here, 0 0.0560. Now I found this nice little image here. This zero looks nice because you gotta have a zero there. Um, to, um, you know, so you can see the decimal point, and this fills the place value, but that doesn't mean anything. In this particular number, this is the first significant digit, 5. Any non-zero going from left to right, any non-zero that's leading, uh, or from left to right, is considered the first significant digit. So because these two zeros here are leading the whole number from left to right, they are called leading zeros. Do you see how I put it both in green? So this is your first significant digit, this is your second, and this is your third. Now I know that we can have an infinitesimal amount of zeros uh, like after, or lagging, uh, trailing zeros, whatever you want to call them, but that doesn't matter. Whoever wrote this number down, 0 0.0560, let's say it's a math teacher, they this is intentional, that zero. It means that this number has three, count it, three significant digits, five, six, and zero, to make up 0 0.0560. I have some examples over here. So 10. Um, 10, the decimal place would be there. It's not written, but you know it's there. We have this one. Remember the first non-zero on the from the left to the right, that's the first significant digit. This would be the second. So how many sig digs are here? Two. First, second, third, fourth. How many sig digs are here? Four significant digits. Uh-oh, here's a couple of leading zeros, right? I'll put a little box around those guys. Those are insignificant, they don't, they don't count. So how many sig digs? Well, there's the first sig dig, second, and third. This is the third. So if you counted one, two, three, four, five, you'd be wrong. Um, now the next question that we have is, revealed here. All significant or significant digit rule for all math problems. Okay, well, I guess this isn't a question, but here's a question. So I just punched a bunch of numbers into my calculator and my answer is like 25 digits long. How many digits should the final answer be written in? Which is basically how all my students sound <laughs> to me. Not, not all of them, but. but it's a great question. So you do have a billion digits. Well, what do you do? Okay, well, check this out. Here is the golden rule. The final answer of any mathematical question should be written in the lowest number of significant digits that are found in the question. Now, what does that actually look like? Okay, well, I have some examples. So here is a mathematical question. 5.1 plus... 6.78. Okay, so there's the question. It was written, it's on a test. You punch it into your calculator because you want to be safe, and you get the answer 11.88. Now, that's pretty cool. That's the raw answer. Except there is a special significant digit answer. And according to that rule, remember, the final answer of any mathematical question should be written in the lowest number of significant digits that are found in the question. So in the question, you have to ask yourself, well, how many sig digs? What's the lowest number you see in the question? Well, how many sig digs here? Answer, there's two sig digs, five and one. How many sig digs are here? Three. What's the lowest number of sig digs found in the question? Two. So I want this raw answer from the calculator, only two significant digits. That's what the question is actually saying. So, what is the second significant digit? This one. 
I need to round this number to this significant digit, the second one. So what does the 8 do to the 1? It bumps it up 1 by the rules of rounding. The sig dig answer is 12, and that would be the appropriate final answer. Now, you never round up to the sig digs throughout the problem, especially if it's two, three, four, five step problem. You never round until the very end. The significant digit answer is your final answer. So let's do this one. Three sig digs here, three sig digs here. Looks like the lowest number of sig digs found in the question is three, so my final answer should be three. Punch this into the calculator and I have 10. That's what your calculator response will give you. And so if on a quiz or something, you write 10 down, but you're supposed to have your answer in three significant digits, this would be considered wrong. A big fat X. You need three significant digits, and yet there are only two here. So you would need to answer in the scientific way, according to the significant digit rule, 10.0. Now there's three significant digits, and you're done. How about this one? Two significant digits here one significant digit here. Remember, these are all leading zeros, so they are considered insignificant, even though they're, they're important, but to the, to, to the question of how many sig digs, they're not. So one sig dig is the lowest number of sig digs in the question, so my answer should be uh, in, in uh, one significant digit. Punch this into your calculator, 0 0.0023 times 0 0.2, and you will get the answer 0 0.00. .00 zero, four, and a big fat six. So let me just get a different pen here, a different uh, color. Where is my first significant digit? Well, it's this four. So we've got to round this answer to this digit. What does the six do to the four? It's above five. Our sig dig answer should be zero point zero, zero, a zero, five. That is one significant digit that's technically a one. That's one significant digit as the question dictates. That's it. Now, this final example here is a special one that I put down because it's, it's a little special and you need scientific notation. If you don't know what that is or not expected, then I'd stop watching now and just go and practice your sig dig answers. But in this case, my students are expected to figure out how many uh, scientific notation or sig digs and using scientific notation is a way to answer this question. So you punch 148.2 times 2 into the calculator and your raw answer is 296.4. Isn't that fun? Just like that. So I go to the question, there's four sig digs here and there's one sig dig here, which means my answer needs to be rounded to one significant digit. So just getting a different pen, and you'd be all like, okay, fine. So here's the first significant digit. What does the 9 do to that? It's like too many times my students will answer this question, 3. Now, how in the crap are you expected to convince me that your rounded 3 is the rounded version of 296.4? See, if you round this, this digit, your answer should be 300. And unfortunately, you need three digits, significant ones, in order to approximate this. Okay? However, there is a way out of this. Instead of using standard notation, you convert this to scientific notation. And magically, there's one significant digit in a different notation, and you're obeying the golden rule of the final answer must be written in the lowest number of significant digits found in the question. So if you don't know how to do scientific notation, then find that tutorial and watch it. Uh, but for the most part, scientific notation, or, or sig significant digits, I should say, uh, is a pretty easy game to play once you know the golden rule. So I would suggest practicing the ever-living crap out of this. Das Vidanya.